Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Gideon, I think that it, you launch on your side my PowerPoint, huh? Uh, on here. Yeah. yeah, we're about to. It's on the screen now, yeah. Yes, okay. So, I try to, to get a, a brief presentation of this new uh, instrument, which is called the State Building Contract, which is a new a type of uh, budget support contract that we uh, we have developed in the context of the EU Council conclusion. Can you hear me properly? Yeah. Fine, okay. And uh, yes, the EU Council conclusion of May 2012 have developed a new uh, approach of budget support uh, 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 instruments and policy, uh, including three types of new budget support and uh, the, 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 new, uh, the, the new and the uh, type was the uh, state building contract. So we have for the time being uh, less than three years of experience with these new uh, instruments. The rationale behind uh, um, these supports is to provide uh, um, a specific support to fragile and democratic transition. So it means that uh, it could be a support uh, uh, to fragile state but also to uh, fragile transition, not only to uh, fragile countries. And we have some example, and I will come back uh, co come later to, to the example where we have uh, this type of support for for uh, for uh, country which are not necessarily fragile as such. Um, the, the the objective is to to support the, the transition process towards development and democratic governance to ensure vital state function, including service delivery to improve the financial capacity of the partner government to undertake measures aiming at restoring peace, ensuring macroeconomic stability, and uh, fulfilling uh, over uh, short-term objectives. This is a budget support which has to be seen as a complementary instrument to other means of uh, interventions uh, like uh, capacity development, uh, eventually project, and uh, that could be also combined with uh, 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 humanitarian aid in such uh, uh, second on seeds. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, in terms of proportion, we have uh, its remains uh, hopefully quite limited. We have uh, six uh, percent of state building contract uh, compared to uh, 82 percent of sector reform contract and uh, four percent of uh, good governance and development contract. It's okay now. Sorry. Uh, there is a question. I, I, I can't have a question. Sorry, you it, was, it was an echo on, on the on the sound from, from your end. So it's okay now, don't worry. Okay. Uh, so the proportion uh, is uh, is quite limited in terms of number of contracts, but uh, next slide. We have for the time being currently uh, 15 ongoing state building contracts all around the world. Most of them are uh, located in Western and Central African countries. Uh, in terms of uh, ongoing financing commitment, it means that we have a, a stock of commitment for on this uh, contract, which is uh, around 1.3 billion euro, which means uh, represent around 12 percent of our total commi commitment of budget support. Uh, so it means that in terms of size, the state building contract are. Uh, much bigger than the other type of uh, uh, budget support contracts, such as the sector reform contracts. Uh, in terms of disbursement, we have disbursed this, this year uh, more than 600 million euro. Uh, it it represents around 40% of the total payment on budget support operation. There is a mistake. It's not 40% of the commitment, but of the payment. So. With this, uh, I, I don't want to, to elaborate m uh, a lot on this uh, on this data, but just to to see that uh, they are uh, this is the type of contract which are usually bigger than the normal uh, budget support operation, and the speed of payment is much higher than the other uh, budget support operations. So just to give you uh, an idea for the time being, we have a, a state building contract in uh, Burundi, Central African Republic, Sierra Leone, Togo, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mauritania, Madagascar, uh, but also in Tunisia, Ukraine, and Haiti, 
and we are working on uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Guinea Conakry uh, as a new uh, set building contracts which should be uh, finalized uh, very quickly. Next slide. So the eligibility criteria uh, for to, to, to launch the, this type of support. So this is, they are the same, uh, formally the same eligibility criteria as for, than for other type of budget support operation. But the assessment of this uh, eligibility criteria are not the same. Uh, we, because the track records of these, these countries are generally weak, uh, we, we, so we need to, to, to have a more uh, forward-looking approach, a dynamic approach, and a tailor-made uh, approach. This is really, uh, they are really the key word of the, uh, the design of these programs. So we have a, a, an eligibility criterion on the public policy. So of course we are not necessarily able, uh, when we intervene on a country, to get a, a, a finalized uh, strategy, uh, national policy or strategy of development of the country, which is validated. And uh, so we at least need to get a, a kind of transition roadmap or something which is. Uh, which has been uh, uh, approved by uh, by the authorities, and that could be a basis to uh, to start uh, with a program. So, and we need to to assess at least the relevance of credibility of this uh, transition strategy in terms of objective uh, and means. The, the macroeconomic uh, eligibility criteria for for this program uh, uh, is of crucial importance. Uh, in order to, to step out of uh, the, the fragility situation. Of course, the, uh, uh, the, the, the link uh, with uh, the, the relation with the IMF uh, is generally, generally provide a, a very good uh, assurance. So if there is at, at least a rapid credit facility uh, or a, a comfort letter with the IMF, uh, we, we could, uh, we can intervene, uh, that could be accepted as a, as a, a fulfillment of uh, eligibility criteria. PFM, Public Finance Management, uh, we need to get a PFM action plan, a reform program, uh, at least to assess that the core function essential are there. In some extreme cases, it means that uh, we, we need to, to, to get in place at least a treasury committee. This is the case in uh, Central African uh, Republic and in, uh, in Guinea-Bissau, for instance, but at least to, to be sure that uh, the minimum of core functions are there, otherwise there is no, no possibility to transfer the funds, uh, simply. Um, transparency on other side of the budget, this is the new eligibility criteria which has been introduced by the EU Council conclusion in 2012. So there is a, 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 this is a, a, an eligibility criteria which is assessed with an entry point. So the entry point, this is to get at the minimum the uh, publication of the budget. And in the case of a state building contract, we need to, to, to get it before the first disbursement. So next, next slide. So the assessment of this uh, eligibility criteria is done in a, uh, usually a very risky environment. And you can see with this graph that uh, compared to the other types of uh, a budget support operation, that this is clear uh, that the uh, environment, the profile of risk of the countries where we intervene with a, a state building contract is much higher than in the other, uh, in the other, for the other countries where we, we come with uh, other types of uh, budget support operations. So you have in the middle of the graph uh, the state building contract uh, risk profile, where we, you can see that the political risk in the red is very high, usually, uh, substantial or high at least. Macroeconomic uh, risk is also uh, higher compared to the other type of uh, contract, and this is also the case for the developmental risk, the public financial risk, and the corruption and fraud risk. So, this is why, again, we need to get a forward-looking approach, a dynamic approach, but also to highlight the risk of non-intervention. This is really a key issue in the assessment of, uh, of uh, what, 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 we, what we, we do uh, 
by taking the decision to intervene or not. We, we have a budget support steering committee, uh, which is an internal uh, uh, decision-making process in the, in the commission, where, which is shared by our DG, uh, where we, we discuss, uh, there is discussion on the guidance, uh, strategic guidance, to see whether this is a, a, a good idea or not to go ahead with the state building contract in the country. And in, the, in those discussions, it is clear that the risk of non-intervention is a key element. Um, the risk response strategy and the mitigating measure which will be in place, uh, which will accompany the program, are also a key, uh, a key point. And they have to be uh, clearly uh, defined uh, in advance with the uh, uh, design of the program in order to, to see how we could mitigate as much as possible uh, the risk. So this is really a case-by-case -case analysis. And this is why we, are, uh, we could be able to accept uh, higher risk uh, in, uh, in certain, in, uh, in, uh, for this type of program compared to the uh, average risk, which could be uh, acceptable uh, in the other types of uh, programs. Next uh, slide. So the internal coordination for this type of program are very uh, important. This is, uh, it has to be strengthened at different level, at headquarter level, but also at local level. Uh, it means that uh, we try with uh, the, the overall donor and partner on the field to share the diagnosis, to organize joint mission, to uh, elaborate one map, joint one map, joint uh, um, uh, PFM ac action plan uh, uh, together in order to uh, rationalize uh, the, all the work of uh, design, assessment, analysis, diagnosis that we need to do uh, in order to, uh, to, prepare the, to prepare the program. At a wider level, the institution, uh, institution dialogue and fragility with the EU, IMF, World Bank, and the ADB is also uh, an important uh, forum to, to, to exchange on this, um, on this experience. And we, we, we meet uh, regularly uh, once or twice a year to, to see, uh, to try to do the, the lesson that we can learn from, uh, from this type uh, of uh, program on our side and the, the, the experience of the other partner uh, on, the, on the fragile uh, countries. In terms of design of the uh, of program, so next uh, slide. Uh, this is normally a one two year uh, program, so uh, I, I will come later on this issue. Uh, we, we, we can see that this is too short. And we, we already see that this is too short. So that could be renewable once. So it means that normally, originally, we plan to get maximum four-year duration program of state building contract, which appear to be uh, to be too short. Uh, so some uh, some of the program have, a, uh, have already a duration of three years. We try to favor larger fixed range compared to uh, variable tranches. I don't know if everybody in the audience is familiar with uh, this type of, uh, of program. So um, the budget support uh, program uh, is, uh, is um, the transfer can be done uh, with a fixed tranche based on the assessment and the four eligibility criteria and variable tranches based uh, on the assessment of a specific indicator on specific uh, component in order to focus on the particular uh, important issue for the policy, policy dialogue. So the, we, we, we uh, encourage to get a very limited number of indicators for these uh, famous uh, variable tranches and uh, to get a smart indicator, simple, realistic focus on reform at, at the level of input or output, which is very complicated to get in a state building contract indicator at the level of, of outcomes, which is already too, uh, too long a uh, period. Um, the component and element for the dialogue uh, should be focused on governance issue and uh, vital state function, uh, service delivery for social sectors in particular. This is really the key component of this program, uh, governance and uh, uh, social delivery. And uh, uh, we, 
we identify also the mitigating measures, so the capacity development, which is the type of program which uh, can have a very uh, substantial uh, component of technical assistance and uh, capacity development. We can put specific conditions uh, related to PFM, uh, in including uh, uh, precondition to, 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 do, to, to sign the program or to, to, to start the disbursement. And in some cases, we do not exclude to get uh, targeted aid if it's necessary. So next slide. Sorry, Natalie, could I, could I give you five more minutes just to um, go through the rest of your slides before we move on to the, to the next speakers? Is that possible? Excuse me, Gideon, I didn't... Uh, Sorry, uh, can, I, can I just give you another five minutes to, uh, to yes, go through I the rest of your points? Yes, I think that will be uh, that will be uh, I, I could uh, speed up. Okay. So uh, okay. So next slide. Uh, I, I don't know how, how much uh, time I, I was supposed to, to get. So maybe this is a bit too long. So just uh, briefly, the state road, uh, state building contract roadmap. This is the assessment that we do in order to prepare uh, the identification st uh, stage. So this is the type of question that we try to uh, to answer in order to see whether. Uh, um, a state building contract could be or not a valid option on when it could be a, a, a valid uh, option. Should we, should, are we able to start immediately or, or, or later? Uh, next slide. In terms of good practices, uh, looking at our experience of state building contract, uh, we can say that uh, the forward looking approach uh, we have a good example in the state building contract in Ivory Coast. Uh, the donor coordination has been also a good experience, as uh, Gideon uh, certainly knows better than me, uh, in South Sudan, despite the fact that, of course, uh, we have been, never been able uh, to, to implement this uh, state building contract. The transition process has been properly uh, um, uh, assessed and uh, taken into account in the state building contract in Tunisia and the quick, comprehensive and coordinating response, uh, the, the good example uh, that we have uh, could, be, uh, could be Mali, uh, the Ma state building contract in Mali. Uh, next slide, uh, we'll go very fast with this slide because this is already uh, examples out of date. Just to mention that um, sometimes the state building contract is not the good, uh, the good uh, answer. And the assessment that we did, uh, so you have example of uh, 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 that we, of assessment that we did in 2013, so don't be surprised to see Yemen. Um, and uh, so in 2013, we, we launched uh, uh, an identification mission to see whether a state building contract could be considered in Yemen, uh, again in 2013, and, uh, but uh, it didn't appear to be the proper, the proper uh, instrument. So we, uh, we have preferred to go towards a PFM reform project as a first step, maybe, for something else later. The same for Timor-Leste, where, where finally a uh, sector reform contract and PFM reform has been more interesting. And in Somalia, clearly, it was, uh, it was uh, very extreme weaknesses of the key institution uh, didn't uh, allow to, to, go away, to, do, to go ahead with the state building contract. Uh, next slide. So the lesson that we can learn after three years of experience of state building contract in uh, around uh, 15 countries, this is that uh, the high volatility of, of the situation needs for a very quick uh, uh, reaction. So we need to get short-term uh, programs, strong coordination, and fast implementation. This is really the key uh, elements of the success of this uh, program. Um, we, as I mentioned, uh, before the risk and the cost of non-intervention has to be uh, properly assessed in order to, 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 to take the, the, the right decision, even with a, a high level of risk. We need a, a strong coordination between, uh, with the member states. And uh, the first steps toward the SBC uh, has to be uh, taken as uh, early as possible. Uh, so as soon as uh, the budget support eligibility condition seems to be met, we really need to start the discussion for, to formulate uh, a budget support uh, program with the government. Next step. Uh, next slide. Uh, 
the duration of the program, one or two years, as I said, this is too short. So we, in, especially in the country with structural fragilities, uh, like IT, uh, Central African Republic, this is clear that one or two year program are not, uh, are not enough. Uh, we try to favor, in terms of design, more uh, important fixed tranche compared to uh, variable tranches. We need to limit the component of dialogue uh, of the program, so again, um, more focus on uh, um, vital uh, function for social uh, delivery uh, services and governance on PFM issues. Uh, next uh, slide. The targeting ed, uh, could be an option, but so far we didn't use it uh, as such. Uh, we, uh, we always found uh, some other uh, possibility, like uh, a treasury committee, which could be an alternative, uh, which, at least for the time being, uh, works uh, in uh, Guinea-Bissau and in Central African Republic, for instance. We need to get a limited number of indicators, ambitious but realistic. Technical assistance is also a component which has to accompany the program. And we need also to uh, embark and to take into account in the uh, policy dialogue and in the capacity development uh, and uh, strengthening uh, the uh, civil society. And last slide, so which is the uh, summary of the recommendation of the ODI report that uh, Gideon uh, knows well. And uh, that we this is really the conclusion that we share completely uh, and uh, that we will, uh, in a way to number one, uh, take into account in the future of, of our program and uh, we will take into account in the update of our budget support guidelines that we are uh, uh, revised uh, for uh, uh, currently. So this is a flexible instrument for rapid support to fragile states, so we agree. Uh, but. Uh, the design tension between, uh, and I think this is the most interesting uh, conclusion of, your, of the ODI study, the design tension between supporting short-term stabilization and, or crisis management and long-term sustainability objective has to be, uh, to be more maybe clarified uh, at the stage of the design of the program. This is not necessarily easy because uh, we have uh, some country where uh, the structural fragility of the transition situation uh, can be combined, but I think that this is really something that we need to look at more carefully in order to, uh, to identify the, the right uh, objective of the program. Closer or more frequent risk monitoring, this is uh, clearly something which, uh, that we need to, to, to get to accompany properly the program. Political, economic and in the effective political dialogue, this is clear, uh, South Sudan is a, is a good example and technical assistance uh, to get more strategic and more flexible approach, which is also something that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, take, uh, take, uh, take us. So, yes, I hope that I was not uh, too technical uh, because, uh, again, I don't know exactly the, <laughs> the level of knowledge of the uh, audience and the, this type of uh, instruments, but uh, I could be ready to clarify some point if it was too, uh, too technical. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Natalie. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of, of, of uh, questions that people will have on all the different facets of, of your state building contract programs. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll hear some more from you a little bit later. Um, Simon, over to you.